Hi, everyone. Welcome to day three of your best year yet, a free five-day business alchemy experience for more fulfillment, impact, cold, hard cash in 2021. I had to get that out there. Um, really excited you're here. We have a super duper special guest today. We're actually going to be tuning into the astrology of 2021 with master astrologer, teacher, and author of the astrology, astrology dictionary, Donna Woodwell. So hi, Donna. So happy you're here. Hi. Yeah, I keep forgetting. I can tell people I actually wrote the dictionary. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Pretty epic, right? Uh huh. So Donna actually went to grad school to become a foreign correspondent, but she did not know how foreign she'd get after exploring ancient and modern astrological, magical, and mystical practices for more than 25 years. Today, she uses this wisdom to help folks discover and live their unique genius. Since teaching at major astrology conferences, Kepler College, and Astrology Hub, Donna now runs her own school, combining astrology and magic with techniques of self-mastery called the School of Magic and Mastery. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thank you um, so much for having me, Sam. Yeah. So Donna and I are, are um, older, semi-old friends from uh, Astrology Hub. That was our connecting point. And she's just uh, one of my favorite Virgos, you know, so... <laughs> So happy you're here. I don't see you enough. You know, for, for people who are Virgos and are into perfection, when you're called someone's favorite Virgo, that means twice as much. Oh, good. <laughs> so for everyone here, our intention today is to tune into the astrological weather of 2021. So we aren't going against the current in our businesses. Um, and so Donna, I know that 2020 was a year that astrologers were warning against for years. And in our little back and forth before this call, you were like, actually 2021 is pretty boring comparatively. And I'm like, great. <laughs> I'm hoping there's it's like, more well, than just boring. What can you say about 2020? We told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are you surprised? We told you. <laughs> I know. I feel like 2020 is the, the greatest example of astrology's power. If anyone doubted it before, when all of the astrologers were around <laughs> being like, pay attention. <laughs> yeah, I think next time you have to say things like, it's going to be a dumpster fire. So yeah. um, I, I know that to be even more blunt next time than to sort of couch it in the, well, it might be a little more difficult than usual, but if you've just gotten flashing dumpster fire, you would have gotten a lot more attention. <laughs> Everything's going to crumble. I, I feel like that's how they were describing it anyways, like uh, like old systems crumbling. Oh. So it, it happened. Yeah, and, and they were. <laughs> and they were. So are there any big themes for 2021, just kind of starting with the general broad? Well, between December 14th and December 21st, we have not one, not two, not three. We have six of the seven visible planets changing signs. Now, I have done astrology for almost 30 years, and I have never seen six planets change signs in a week. That's like a lot. And it's happening in the context of eclipses that are happening, and this also once in a lifetime alignment called a great conjunction mm -hmm. where the planets uh, Jupiter and Saturn are meeting at the first degree of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And that, that December 21st moment is the moment that sets all of 2021 in motion. It's just happening on 12, 21 for 2021. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting a little bit of a preview early for the solstice of what the new energy is going to feel like. And it is radically, radically different than the old energy. You know, we've been in this place for the last, I don't know, it's actually not been just this last year. Um, I think this last year wouldn't have been so bad if we weren't cooking before that. We were, we were cooking for a while. We were actually cooking since 2008. That was the moment that the planet Pluto kind of slid into the back door or the front door of Capricorn. And the moment that happened, we had this whole stock market crisis and things started getting unstable at the very bottom level. And Pluto has been hanging out 
setting the baseline for what's happening this whole period of time. And it's still going to be there until um, 2024, 2025. So this whole period, we don't get to stop remaking who we are because of this background noise that's going on. So when you think about astrology, you have to think about the ongoing process that's happening and not just what's happening today. There's always cycles within cycles going on. So we had that. And then a few years ago, uh, we had Saturn also move into Capricorn. Now, Saturn likes being in Capricorn, um, but wherever Saturn goes encourages us to, you know, really get serious and get real with ourselves and get structured. And so a lot of people, when Saturn moved into Capricorn, were like, all right, what do I actually want to do with my life? And they started making changes. They started... Um, streamlining. They started moving houses. They started pairing up. They started starting their own businesses so that they had a container. Saturn's really good at building a containers, especially when he's in Capricorn. Um, so we had that process already starting to gestate. And then at the beginning of 2020, we had a third planet join the mix, and that was Jupiter. Now, unlike Saturn, Jupiter does not like being in Capricorn. It just doesn't like it at all because Jupiter loves to feel free to expand and explore and reach into all kinds of things. It's the principle that pulls us up and outside of ourselves. And Capricorn is the exact opposite of that. It pulls us down and makes us look at our feet. And so it's like our whole optimistic, na optimistic nature is stumbling over itself and we feel trapped and confined. And well, what happened in 2020? As soon as a third planet got in the mix, fourth planet got in the mix, because Mars got in there too. And Mars is in traditional Babylonian philosophy, the plague bringer. <laughs> so we were trapped and combined and Mars, the plague bringer came along and poof, we are off to the races. And so this was kind of a moment that um, I'm not sure anybody would have have been brave enough to predict a pandemic because pandemics are so rare. I mean, they happen like once every hundred years or so. It's it's a that's a you know a once in a generation, once in multi generational thing. So I don't think anybody would have gone that far. But you know, hindsight, just 2020, you look back and you're like, oh yeah, that's a plague. <laughs> that's a plague, and here we are. All right, so all that constellation of energies that's set up to create where we are is breaking up almost overnight. Within like a week, the energy just starts to disappear. And Jupiter and Saturn are moving together into an air sign, Aquarius. It's a very different energy. Um, the sun's moving into Aquarius. I think uh, Mercury's moving into Aquarius. I think... Um, Venus is moving into Sagittarius. It doesn't matter. They're all moving at the same time. And just think about a time when everything in your life was moving. Like you got a new relationship and you got a new house and you started going back to school. And you're like, whoa, what's happening? That's the feeling that we're going to have in these next few, few weeks as we get reoriented into the beginning of next year. So, oh, you know. Wait, Donna, before you keep going, this episode, um, we're recording it on December 10th, but it's actually going to come out on December 30th. So I know, I, and so you almost need to like coming like, out. Of let's reflect moment. back on December twenty first. What what can we like learn from that? Or I'll let you keep going. Uh, well, well, you're the master teacher. Uh, <laughs> I, I know you're probably you're listening to this after this has happened, but huh. December this whole month is about moving into what's new, and it's interesting that there is a total solar eclipse that was on the um, the fourteenth of December is both the day when the United States sends all of its election people off to um, the electoral college. And there, that's, a, that's a final date for changing new energies. Like you've missed that deadline. You ain't gonna be able to complain anymore because you, know, you ain't gonna be president. Um, and that eclipse, that total solar eclipse is right across Donald Trump's sun and moon because he was also born in an eclipse. So it's like, well, bam and here we are off to the race so everything unspools and changes i love astrology because it can be so precise sometimes 
So with this new energy that's coming in, the, the great eclipse, the great conjunction, sorry, um, the great conjunction is at zero degrees Aquarius. It's the first time we've had a great- And this is the December 21st date, just yes. for everyone. Um, it's the first time we have had a great conjunction in Aquarius since 1424, 26, something like that. So like 600 years since we've had one in Aquarius. And we haven't had one at the first degree of Aquarius, which is a very potent degree. The first degree, zero degrees of anything is like new, whoa, new, um, in at least 3,000 years. And I say at least 3,000 years because that's as far back as my software goes and I couldn't go back any further. So it's been a really, really long time since we had an eclipse like this. Plus, it's visible. You can, if you, if you got a chance to watch it, I hope you went out around the 21st and saw the two planets. It's going to be, it was all over the news. So I hope you didn't miss it. I mean, ABC and NBC and CBN, they're all telling you to go outside. So hopefully you paid attention because they're going to be, they were so close together. They look like one star, perfect for like the Christmas star, you know, and they are changing the equation because it's an air sign. And that's the signature for next year. Everything that's happening is moving from this earthy, grounded, look at your feet, to communicate and be in the air. And that is such a huge shift. I mean, hold a rock in one hand, hold a feather in, the diff in your other hand. And notice the difference. That's the difference in the energy that we're experiencing in the next year. So we have Saturn and Jupiter, both in air signs. I can talk about what they're doing. We have all of the Mercury retrogrades in air signs. I can talk about what they're doing. And the eclipses are in air and fire. So I can talk about what they're doing. But basically, any way you slice it, we are moving to a time when going fast, communicating, looking at different options, and going forward and not looking back and not being so conservative are your best strategies for moving forward. So this is great if you're an air person and you like that, hey, hey, this, 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 and go here and go there. Um, if you're the type of person who is like, oh, look, a bird, and you get distracted, or you have like too many irons in the fire, um, it might be a little harder on you because there's gonna be less to keep you focused. So if I had one thing I would recommend to every business person is enjoy the freedom that the air is going to bring you. Use it wisely. Use it to revamp your systems, especially technological stuff. We're going to see a pace of technological advancement increase even faster than it was before. And it was going pretty fast, but it's probably been driven by the fact that we are all having to do this online stuff in a way we never had to do before. Um, and, and that's all great, but don't allow yourself to have so many fires burning all at once that you burn yourself out or you, um, you know, you behave like a sprinkler and not a laser. Um, because if you're sprinkling, you're not getting anything done. And so you might need to air, air signs, love to have someone else to communicate with. So it's going to be the year of the mastermind. Anybody who has enough wherewithal to create masterminds to help each other out and to check and balance is going to be golden for what this year is going to need for people. So there is another business tip as a way, go that way. <laughs> so is that a good overview? That's a great overview. Such great context. Makes you really excited. Uh, one thing I, I would, just from what you had just said is, for us as business owners to use this freedom right now to our advantage. And I was curious what you meant by the freedom right now. Well, metaphorically speaking, in astrology, we're talking about four basic elements to the world. There's earth, air, fire, and water. And they all have strengths and weaknesses. They all have plus sides and minus sides. Earth stabilizes things. It, it gives it a lot of tenacity and lets us, you know, know where we put things and helps us to grow slowly and steadily. Fire heats us up, gets us all enthusiastic and gets us moving, but doesn't necessarily have follow through. Water 
blends, has emotions, connects to people, but can feel sorry for itself and get stuck in doldrums. And I don't want to do that because I feel cruddy. It's like, who cares if you feel cruddy? You got to do it anyway if you're going to run your own business. Air strength is that it, um, it can go really fast. It can see lots of possibilities. It loves to network and hold on and hold out to people. Um, its downside is that um, is the air brain, scatterbrained side of the equation where it can get easily distracted or, um, and so it has follow through issues just like fire does, but for a slightly different reason, it's just trying to do too much. And it's, it would rather fulfill its curiosity than do what's necessary. So it doesn't like being bored. And for things, some things we do in business, yeah, they're not always the most fun thing in the entire world, but you got to do them anyway. So um, people can, who can help you automate or can help you do things that you may find really boring, also going to find a way into this year. So service people who can make problems other people don't like go away are going to have a great opportunity to fit in somewhere this year. And you can do it online because, again, it rules. And so there's a lot of stuff coming up in the realignment. I mean, essentially, we're going through a paradigm shift. I mean, all this is happening at the beginning of Aquarius. And I, we talk about the dawning of the age of Aquarius. In the age of Aquarius, you know, it dawns on a regular basis. It's, it's a, a growing thing that personally I think has been growing since the Italian Renaissance. And it's just getting louder and louder and louder and louder. But it's getting, it's really getting to the point where what we're looking around it, we're in the Aquarian age. And this Aquarian great eclipse, the first one we've had in 800 years, is really a sign that we're here. So what you see around you, all the pluses and minuses, that's the Aquarian age. It's not going to get any better. It's not going to get any worse. It's not like the aliens are going to come down and enlighten us all, all of a sudden. It's, we've got to do the work. And that work is being clear and conscious when we're doing whatever we're doing. And if that means being clear and conscious while you're doing your business, excellent. Because this is not the era where you go and live in a monastery and go be spiritual. You better be spiritual where you are right now and paying attention to what you're doing as if it's helping you develop the, the skills, the, the focus, the, the passion, the alignment with your soul purpose, all of that stuff. You better be doing it in your day-to-day -day life because if you aren't, um, when is it going to get done? And so Donna, that's why it's so great that people like you are doing this kind of work. Yeah. I was going to say the name of the podcast is business is a magical practice. So it's, this is, this is all we're talking about. I love that so much. And so this is day three of a 2021 planning event. And what you just said made me a little nervous that maybe with all of this air, we can't actually plan. Is it, is it, there's going to be a lot of things changing. So there's not much we can plan or is it extra important to plan because our brains and the systems in place will try and pull us out of those plans if we don't do it now. There are, I, I was listening to or re-listening to the audio version of um, James Clear's Atomic Habits. And in the beginning of that book, he talks about the two kinds of plans. There's the plan for the goals you want to set for yourself. And those high level goals give you a direction to follow. And there's the plan that has to do with tinkering with the systems and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis to achieve your goals. And, you know, while goals can be great, it's good to have them because if you're going to get in a boat or a car, you have to have some idea where you're going or you're not going to get out of your parking space. Um, we need those, and those should come from within. Um, but we also need the process stuff. And if you can accept that our goals are going to be changing, because it's a paradigm shift, and you can't take what you know now to figure out what you want to be um, without expecting there to be change because there's information that's going to come that you are not going to be aware of and you can't be aware of right now until we get a little bit farther into this process. If you can accept that your goals are going to move around a little bit, you can work on your process 
And it's a great year for getting that process sorted out. So if you can get clear that you're going to write, I don't know, you want to write your great American novel. All right, sit down and do your 10,000. I mean, you're Okay, 10,000 words a day is a lot. Okay, that's about 5,000 words a day. How about 500 words a day? <laughs> if you can work on that stuff so that you know you're heading, that your, your habits are generating what you need to go in the right direction, that's going to get you really far. And that's where working with the astrology can come in and be really helpful because planets are secular, are, 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 um, they run in cycles. Um, and because they're cyclic, um, they can force you to get in habits that are also cyclic. And that's why we mark these things on our calendar because it makes sure that we take care of everything. We take care of the earth, air, fire, and water sides. We, take, we make sure we keep coming back to clearing out our stuff. We make sure that we start and follow through and evaluate, rest, start, follow through, evaluate, rest. We need all those things in order to succeed. And, and we can take astrological elements so that we're working with the wind when it's blowing that direction. Does that make sense? Totally. Makes me excited for the year. <laughs> so um, I think we should get into a little bit of the astrology so we can start planning then. And I okay, so, requested from you a few different topics to go through. Maybe I'll just let you go and run course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't obey well. Or rebel. Or rebel. <laughs> She's going to rebel, you guys. <laughs> I don't obey well. All right. So here's the deal. Compared to last year, where there were lots and lots of difficult days, we don't have those next year. I mean, we just, there are like four major things to think about. And we had like 50 last year. So that's the first thing to know is that it's, it's, it's all air and it's far less fractious. And because Jupiter and Saturn are just switching signs, what, what that will create is in the beginning of the year, there's some really long void of course moons. And so there's going to be um, a lot more space. It's going to feel more expansive. I don't know about you, Sam, but I know sometimes I find myself, my life actually hasn't changed that much because <laughs> I live in a garret with all my books and my dog and occasionally my child who goes between my house and my ex-husband's house. And that's the way my life was before. So me too. I, my <laughs> life is not functionally that different. I work online already. Yeah. And but, even, even though my life isn't that different, it still has felt really heavy, mm -hmm. really, really heavy. And um, I'm not used to that. I mean, I'm an earth girl and I'm not used to that just carrying around rocks mm -hmm. and that's dissipating. So the big aspect of next year is just one. It's Saturn square and Uranus. It's happening all year long. It's exact on February 17th, June 14th, and December 24th. So that's like a long span. So they are in a wide square for pretty much all of the year. Saturn in Aquarius likes to take all of our ideas and get them all structured and organized. Saturn Aquarius, think Einstein. He's a, he's a Saturn and Aquarius kind of energy. It's really good for, um, for thinking grand thoughts, but putting them in a practical way that you can communicate to others. Uh, Uranus and Taurus. Um, Uranus is a, I want to be free to be myself, and it, but it's in a really earthy place. And so it's trying to bring that spark of genius down in practical ways. So you put the two of them together and we have a year that's really about practical, technological, scientific uh, kinds of innovations. So anybody who's working in things that innovate for people and create new systems for them, and, you know, and that could be the brand spanking new battery all the way to the new software that does this whiz bag thing we didn't even know we needed until we got in the middle of a pandemic. So all that kind of stuff is going to do really well over the course of the year as our people who set up communication systems um, and help people get things done. And even people who help people sort out what they want to do with their lives. Um, I remember, I remember like, back in 2016, I was already saying on Astrology Hub things, like, hello, we're going to have 
thousands, hundreds of thousands and millions of people who are going to lose their jobs because of technology. And well, it's here a little earlier than I expected, but we're here. So we're going to have to retrain an entire workforce because the world is not the same. If you think you're going to go outside when you get your, you get your shot, your vaccine, and you're going to go back the way it was, uh-uh. No, that, that world is gone and we are never going back to it ever. And so if you're one of the people who's lost your job and you're trying to figure out what to do, the energy is going to what's new and figuring out what that means for you. And anybody who can help people figure out what that means for them, is going to be in incredible demand over the next, you know, really up until the 2030s. It's going to be a while before we make the full transition, but it starts now. And it starts with these aspects that are happening. So um, this is where, so I'm all saying, you know, that, um, that plants never survive their, their meeting with reality or something along those lines. Um, yeah, make a plan, make a direction, but understand that um, because it's so new, you're probably going to have to remake your plan and remake your plan and don't get too attached. That's one of the lessons of, of Aquarius is it's a fixed sign. Um, and so it wants to be attached, but you can't attach to air, you know, so it's already got the paradox built into it of what it means to attach when it's just air. And we're all going to have to figure that out like in our bodies as we move through what this new world is going to look like. Now, Jupiter's also in Aquarius. That is going to lighten up the moon. It's going to make us feel more optimistic. There's going to be a lot of more optimism uh, about what's coming. And it'll wear off when Jupiter moves, but we got at least a good year. I, I'm, I'm, I'll take it. I'll take whatever we can get. Um, Jupiter is in Aquarius for 287 of the days next year, and it's in Pisces for 78 of them. So when Jupiter is in Aquarius, um, that's the time you want to be working on your projects and your communication stuff for the 78 days that it is in Pisces from May 14th to July 28th. That's when you want to take your, your downtime um, because Jupiter in Aquarius, I mean, uh, Jupiter in Pisces, um, it's, it's home. It's home. It's happy there. It doesn't want to do anything. It wants to escape and, and leave. And so it's almost like we go through the beginning of the year getting all excited. I'm going to do all these things. It's like, oh, but I had all that, like, I could go in my cave when I was in the middle. Of, I mean, I, I can't go back to my cave. <laughs> anyway, so the cave months are June and July of next year, especially because that's also the time when all the planets go retrograde. So we've got all the retrogrades and we've got Jupiter in Pisces. So really uh, time off. Uh, take a mid-year break this year, like kind of around the summer solstice. Uh, Mercury retrogrades are in air. Talk about planning around astrological events. I actually like Mercury retrogrades. Some people hate them. I kind of like them because we have one every 88 days or so. So every three months. It's like a built-in... It's a built-in break and evaluate system that we have into our business plans. So the first one is in Aquarius on January 30th to February 21st. The second one is in Gemini from May 29th to June 22nd. And the third one is in Libra from September 28th to October 18th. So if you mark those off in gray on your calendar and you make sure you do Everything that you were supposed to do in the other months, but you didn't because you were working or avoiding, and do them. So that's things like, I don't know, um, making sure all of your systems in place, making sure they all work, making sure the bills are being paid, like electronically or whatever you do, um, making sure that you did the bookkeeping, that you actually push the button in QuickBooks and it's all doing its processing because it, because then you don't have to like wait till the end of the year and do it all at once. <laughs> Those kinds of things. That's the stuff you do when Mercury is retrograde because when Mercury retrograde is over, it's about two to two and a half to three weeks. It just depends. Um, then you'll have like a clean slate 
And so if you are going to use that moment, I just mark it off now and say that you are working half time on your usual stuff and half time on all the cleanup and organizing deep worky, um, deep clean stuff that has to happen. Um, and it's especially useful for systems things this year because it's an air and air likes to talk. It likes to teach. It likes to learn and it likes to, um, do anything that involves um, negotiating with yourself or with others. Um, it likes paper. It likes computers. I mean, we live in the information age. And this is an information age kind of thing. So, and then Before finally, you go we on, have, of course, um, just yeah. for everyone listening, um, if you are being like, holy cow, these are a lot of dates and information, and you're scrambling to write stuff down and you're driving, just a reminder with this five day event, um, if you're listening to the podcast, but you haven't signed up for it, um, make sure you do. It's the dirty slash 2021. Those are all numbers. And we're just, we're sending out all of the information. It's totally free. Just make sure you send, put in your email address and we'll send you a pretty little workbook with all of this information in there. So, okay. Keep laying it on us, Donna. <laughs> and then we have eclipses because every year we have eclipses. And of course, we all know I love eclipses. Anybody around me knows I get so excited. And the eclipses next year, eclipses are important because um, I used to work for a very, very well-known astrologer, um, you know, a household name kind of astrologer in the astrology community. And she who will not be she, named. She who will yeah, not astrologer be named. Astrologer who now. <laughs> yes, I know. I had to. I had to sign an NDA, so I can't. I can't. <laughs> anyway. Um, she liked to say that eclipses are like the moments where you walk across the bridge and to make sure you don't go back, you burn the bridge down after you cross it. <laughs> and, and so eclipses are like that. They're, they're moments of change where you can't go back to what's gone before. That's why having this eclipse in December is so powerful when it's in conjunction with all these other things. It's like we're burning, we're burning the past behind us. You can't go back anymore. So the eclipses that are happening in the coming year, what makes them interesting, really interesting, is that eclipse cycles, they're big, they're huge. They last for like a couple thousand years for each particular eclipse family. So they go on and on. You usually have like 78 to 80 in a family. And that process is like every few years unfolding, like unwinding through time. And it, it gets more intense and then sort of unravels. Just imagine a lifetime of something that happens over a 2,000 year or more span. Okay. What makes these unusual is that they're both really new eclipses. And that's not usually the way things are. They're usually some of, some of this, some of that, some maybe a new one, some that are a couple hundred years old, a couple thousand years old. Both of these were started um, after the scientific revolution, which is their modern era eclipses. And because of that, they are both happening over the North and South Poles um, because eclipses always start at one of the poles and they move across the planet and they go to the other pole. And so the first one is happening on the North Pole and the second one is happening in, down in Antarctica. And the, when, we rarely have North Pole eclipses. So I looked it up. This is the only North Pole eclipse that happens in the 21st century. And we haven't had one for hundreds of years before that. So like they're unique in their newness and they're unique in the fact that they really hit literally the pivotal points of earth. That's the part of earth that we turn around. So I, I wonder what these are going to be like because I'd never experienced them and neither have you and neither is basically anybody else who's listening to this. Um, The May 26th one is the Sagittarius blood moon eclipse. A blood moon just means it's a total lunar eclipse. It makes the moon red. You can go out and watch it for yourself. It's kind of cool. Um, that's when we, uh, that will be opening eclipse cycle and it will give us an opportunity to do our shadow work. And so all those stuff that we don't want to look at, that we don't think about, that gets in our way of doing things, um, we can put that stuff on the table if we want to. I mean, no one's going to force you to, but 
I find in business that it's the places where my shadow gets involved is where I have problems getting my business stuff done, you know? So if there's something I don't want to do and I don't do it 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 and eventually it's not getting done. And unless someone else is doing it for me or I'm paying someone to do it for me, that's a, that's a sabotage point. And you don't want those right in your business. You want things to be clear and moving forward. Um, procrastination is driven by shadow. Think about that. If you don't do your shadow work on a regular basis, if you're not pulling stuff about what your fears and your uncertainties are, that's where procrastination comes from. And so if you do your shadow work, you're going to procrastinate less. If you're going to procrastinate less, you're going to be much more successful at a, being a solopreneur than you would if you weren't doing that kind of work, which is why business is so magical. Or so, you'll at least make your team extremely happy because they won't have to nag you all the time to get stuff from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. And then the, um, so the North Pole Eclipse is on June 10th. And then the ones that are in the fall are on the 19th and on December 4th. And so I would set aside this two week period for um, the 19th of really what month? Asking yourself, um, November 19th to December 4th. Okay. Some, some wizard at, at helping people, uh, coaching them to live a more magical life when it comes to business is going to come up with some kind of worksheet with questions that you can ask yourself about revealing your shadow as it, uh, as it relates to business. Wouldn't that be an amazing workbook for somebody to make <laughs> and give it out during eclipse season and so that people can learn how to do their shadow work that is one of the top questions i get i if you've been around me and eclipses i've been so jazzed about them for so many years because i'm an astro geek and i geek out on these kinds of things um i always get asked the question of how do i do shadow work and it, I assume it's something that people just know and they don't. And um, so that would be a great tool. Just like you do a bunch of year-end questions to like wrap up your journal and process it. Someone needs to do all the questions you ask yourself about shadow and how it can impact your business and make sure it's available because you should be doing it like a ritual when we get to shadow season. You will thank yourself for doing your work. And so me Just, and um, Elizabeth on Team Dirty Alchemy, we were talking about ways to like do support after this event. And we we're like, oh, like, let's just plan on sending out quarterly like reminder emails to be like, how, like, how are your plans going? How are your goals going? But I think that's a much better idea of like, the, this is the time to be doing this thing. Remember from this episode. Yeah, because so. cause if people actually did that, they'd be calling you dirty names. <laughs> but it would be really good for them. It would names. be really good for them. <laughs> Um, and really those four things, that's it. I mean, considering the year that we've had, it feels like, it feels like we've been on this roller coaster and we're like, the roller coaster is done and we're coasting and we're going to get off and then we can decide if we want to get on another ride because it, it's not going to stay this way. I mean, believe me, we're, it's going to get more complicated. It's like, this is our little lacuna year to sort of go, what just happened to me? And um, oh my gosh. So maybe the question I should be asking next. is, is how, what should we be doing in 2021 to set us up for 2022? Is that a good question to ask? I'm curious. Process. <laughs> Process. Uh -huh. That's what we said at the beginning. Go, go yeah. listen to James Clear and his Atomic Habits it's and a great make book. processes for yourself. It is a good book. A really uh, make good processes book. for yourself that can sustain you no matter what happens. Um, if you want to go further, um, into process, uh, Sam and I were talking before this started, there's this great book, um, oh, yes. it was written in 2007 called Get Clients Now. And if you're and, watching on YouTube, um, it's you little, can see the little cover of it right there. Yeah. Um, it's little subtitle is a 28 day marketing program for professionals, consultants, and coaches. Okay. Um, really what she should have put on here is a great big old moon because <laughs> the 28 days is exactly one lunar cycle. And Basically, this book is about giving you a, an inventory checklist um, that, uh, that helps you identify what your 
marketing needs are for the moment and then takes that information and helps you map out a 28 day plan that at the end of you can evaluate whether you've made progress or not take the quiz again and adjust what your plan is and then repeat it for another 28 days you could do this absolutely in conjunction with the lunar cycle and start your 28 day plan at the beginning of every new moon. And as you watch the moon get bigger and bigger and bigger, you'll know you're following your plan. And as it gets darker and darker and darker, you'll know it's time to evaluate and see what worked and see what didn't and move on. So if you can do stuff like this and get a process for yourself, <coughs> sorry, even if your goals change, even if you aren't a hundred percent certain where you're going because let's be clear it's a paradigm shift when we're in a paradigm shift the old rules and our old selves are going away and we can't possibly know where we are going with certainty because it hasn't been invented yet so we have to reach inside into those places that are dark and where stuff grows and germinates and we have to sit with it and let it grow and germinate and be creative and curious about what's going to emerge. And that's a different way than most people are comfortable with. That's like asking people to work like with their opposite hand. I mean, we like feeling like we're in control with our dominant hand. And we don't get to do that when we are shifting into something new. Um, we have to reach inside and see what comes out. And that's another thing the air is really, really good at is being playful and curious. And if we can be playful and curious, um, we will find, even though we may not know what's where we're going to end up down the line, we'll take the next step that we need. And it will be going in the right direction. And trust that you're going to get wherever you need to go, even if where you think you need to go isn't exactly where you ended up. Because, I mean, let's face it, any of us listening on here, I mean, I tried to build, I tried to build my, a version of Magic School back in, oh God, what year was it? I'm going to say 2005, 2006. And I worked with a partner, a business partner, who was supposed to build the technology side and I was supposed to do the marketing side. Well, we absolutely had an idea of what it needed to do. And we absolutely did not have the technology to do it. And my then business partner, he didn't have the wherewithal to code all the things. And I had no idea what kind of a big problem it was. We didn't have a Facebook. Facebook didn't exist when we were trying to do this. It's like, how do you get out to people? We had no idea. And so the whole thing collapsed. But here, X number of years later, you know, 10 plus years later, I, I can go and pay less than $1,000 to get what he was trying to build. Like, that took him forever and it never happened because things have changed so much. Possibilities are available now that we didn't even have 10 years ago. So what I'm telling you is that what you may be destined to do is a possibility that may not have been invented yet. And it's especially true right now because things are changing so hyper fast. Just think, Sam, for a moment, all the people who have been locked up in their little houses and their little boxes for the last year planning and plotting and figuring out huh, what if? And they could be artists. They could be computer coders. They could be all kinds of things waiting for the moment to be born. And so when these things get born over the next year, two years, five years, the world is a different place. And some people, it's going to be because they got tossed out of what they thought they were supposed to do or what they were doing and, that, and their job disappeared. You know, retail jobs are leaving. Um, driving jobs, anybody who's delivering, I mean, temporarily they're, they're working, but, you know, 10 years from now, there aren't going to be delivery jobs because the cars are going to drive themselves. 
<laughs> and you're going to walk. It's going to call you from the computer and say, your stuff is available. Come downstairs. And you're going to walk out and you're going to get it yourself. And then the car's going to drive away and it's going to go back to the mothership and there's no one going to be driving it. And that's radically going to shift everything. And so what do we do with the hundreds of thousands of people who need to move into a new way of experiencing the world? And we're just starting. So I, I, I agree with you. I think next year is going to be an absolutely fabulous year. When I close my eyes, all I see is this great big white light. It's so energetically different. Um, if you can capitalize on it and accept that it's the beginning of something new and not expect it to be what's old and forgive yourself because we're all going to be stumbling through a little bit. So I know you don't like to obey. But I'm still, for very, very selfish reasons, going to loop back around to my questions I had for you. <laughs> okay. I will be good now. I'm done. I have, I have covered everything on my piece of paper. Okay. Shoot. Yeah. No, it, it's beautiful. But I also like my my brain is like, but but when should we launch the program, Donna? <laughs> when should the we program. focus on audience growth, Donna? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't plan things that way for mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. um, because once you put in your personal chart and that's, um, that's how you are tuned. Like we're all mm -hmm. tuned like a guitar mm -hmm. and our tuning is all different. Mm -hmm. And I can easily tell you what's going on up there. And I can tell you if you want to launch a product and all you have to work with is what's up there, okay, do the beginning of the year, do the end of the year, take some time off in the beginning of the year and work with the moon cycles because that's the up there that'll work for everyone. But if you're asking about when is the right time for me to launch this thing, I would need to have your chart and your business chart and and tune in to all that detail stuff and yeah i can do that for you but i don't even do readings for people anymore a good astrologer could do that for you um but if you're really in tune with yourself and you sense how cycles are moving i'm fairly confident you're already feeling what's happening and that if you trust your intuition it's going to be as good or better than a really good astrologer and i know some of them are going to shoot me for this but i also find it to be really true um that and if you need a backup and you're not an astrologer and you don't want to get an astrologer um then i mean tarot and other divination forms are always there if you need like tweaking but I still say you're better off. You're better off just going with the cycles of the moon and keeping it simple, silly. Um, because that's going to tune you into something bigger and larger than you. Plus, I, where we're going, <laughs> we don't need no roads. <laughs> I keep thinking of that Back to the Future, that Back to the Future movie where they where they get into the DeLorean and go off to the future, um, and they pick up the car and fly. And we're gonna we're like we're like in the DeLorean where the car the little wheels go under and the and the car starts to fly. We're like taking off on a different level than we've ever done before. And so, to say okay, on June first you should be doing this, and on June fourteenth you should be doing that, and on June fifteenth you should be doing this. Um, yeah, if you want a navel gaze like that, you can, but I don't think it's going to serve you. Um, plus, I know that's the way a lot of people talk about astrology. That if you want to get in touch with the vibe, then you have to know what's happening right now, and blah blah blah. You know, that's actually not the way astrology, that's not what astrology was designed for. You know, astrology was designed 
to give you a sense of the cosmic energies so that you could stoically face what was coming and transcend it. So in the ancient days, they wouldn't, no one would have said, oh, Saturn is sitting on my ascendant, therefore my life sucks, poor me. <laughs> just, they just wouldn't have done that. They would have said, you know, Saturn is crossing my ascendant. How can I, how can I do magic to harness that kind of energy? And, and, or how can I propitiate Saturn so that it works for me and not against me? And they would have done magic to get around it. And they certainly wouldn't have, have blamed, you know, bad things in life on planets. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure I can give you what you are asking me on a day-to-day -day basis. And I did try to warn you. <laughs> I did try to warn you very nicely. Um, what I'm going to do, I, I, how about this? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And maybe that will help other people. What do you think? Will that work? Yeah. I love that idea. Okay. What I'm going to do is, based on what I know about astrology and what I know about my chart, I am... I am launching my next course right now, which happens to Number be 10, right, just before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's coming out on the twenty on the twentieth of November, okay. uh -huh. and it's gonna run. It's gonna run until eh, middle of February, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to launch again in um, beginning of July, and I'm gonna launch again in December. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm picking those things because A, they're with the solstices. B, they fit in with the energies of what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. C, my class is going to be, that, that gives me that space and time between like March and beginning of July, where we're having some downtime built in, where I'm not in crazy course creation mode for a change. <laughs> And um, my, my partner in crime says that I am going to have to take those three books that I have written and actually put them out into the world. Mm -hmm. And so I know I'm going to have to dive into like a different kind of content creation that's going to require me to really hole up and be by myself. And, but that fits with the energy that's happening. The Jupiter in Pisces wanting to hole up and, and, and think of big picture stuff. It fits with my chart and it fits with all the retrogrades of taking the stuff that I wrote three years ago that has been sitting on my computer and doing nothing and actually putting it out there. So that's good retrograde stuff is to take all the stuff you've done before and, you know, introduce it to the world. Um, so I know that's how I'm going to use the cycles and when I'm going to have launch times. Um, but what that might mean for everybody else's particular businesses kind of depends on where you are. That's why I love books like this mm -hmm. because it lets you identify where you are and mm -hmm. match what you need to do with what's going on in the sky. So, I also like that because I, I feel like not enough people make use of the, like the, the decaying parts or like the waning parts of most cycles. So it kind of forces you. And I, I like, I truly think a key to success is in business is to evaluate and review and not enough close people talk loop. about it. Close the loop. You don't close the <laughs> loop. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I want to tell people. Like you want all these astrological dates, I will give them to you and they are useless to you. If you aren't, if you don't have a basic process down, mm -hmm. if you can't, if you can't start crescendo, close the loop and start again. If you don't have that basic thing down, it doesn't matter if I give you your personal dates, you can't even do the cycle. And mm -hmm. so if you did nothing else for yourself, other than this one thing of working with the phases of the moon, which you can get from basically any calendar and talk about and, and fit what you're doing I mean, you don't even have to get this book. You just have to get a piece of paper and write 28 days of your product cycle and, and shove it on that piece of paper. And I don't know what it would mean for you. I mean, if, it's, if, it's, if you're doing something where you're seeing clients, it might be, um, 
it depends on, do you have to advertise for clients? Do you not have to advertise? I mean, are you already seeing clients? I mean, it could be see a bunch of clients in the beginning of the month and, and then spend the next couple of weeks advertising mm -hmm. or, or evaluating how the last client sessions went or uh, maybe getting more education if you feel like you didn't learn enough or sending out all their client stuff. I don't know. It just depends on what you're doing. And, but if you can envision mapping that cycle of growth, crescendo, release into small bite-sized bits, if you can do that, then you can translate that to, well, um, adding mercury retrogrades and using that for the, the closing the loop cycle, but on a different level. And you can then put in the sun because the sun goes the same way. It goes from super bright in the summertime to super dark in the wintertime and over and over again. And so we have a, an annual cycle and we have a Mars cycle on top of that where we are, it's like a whole two year process where we are going and evaluating and changing as we go along and, and how we use our energy. So like astrology is like layers and layers of cycles, one on top of the other and the noise that we get um, have you ever looked like s stood on a dock and looked out at the ocean and seen all the ripples and it looks like chaos. There's like waves here, waves there and everywhere. That's what astrology becomes Th the waves here and everywhere until you separate it out and you realize that it's just one wave is this way. And then one wave on top of it is like a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And when you mush them all together is when you get the complexity, but astrology gives us the ability to pull it apart so that the underlying order that was already there, we can see. And if we can tap into that underlying order, then we, we know what we need to do but you're not tapping into the order unless you do it. <laughs> you actually have to do it at the basic level first before you put in all these bells and whistles. If I hand you a list of here are all the dates, go do it. Then nobody does it. I know, I know because I've seen, I've seen clients for years. I have had 18 years of clients behind me and I say, here's what you need to do. Here are your cycles. And then they come back a year later. I'm like, did you do this? No, no, no. Well, I hear, I hear that 2021 is the year of masterminds. So maybe if someone yes. had all of their cycles written out and they're in a mastermind where there's accountability and communication around it, maybe this would work. <laughs> yes, that would be great. That would be absolutely great because you could meet like once every 21 days or 28 days and you could fit this. You could put your mastermind in the dark phase of the cycle so that everybody has a chance to synthesize. Mm -hmm. And don't look at me because I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I do this already. We do you this. Guys, we're giving you gold. So. We're giving you gold. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but someone, and that's the beauty. It's like, you know, I've been around, been around, <laughs> I've been around the astrology community. I know everybody. I know people who wrote all these books and I've been on two national boards. I was the youngest person on two national boards and I ran away because I, I recognize that um, I'm not like other astrologers. <laughs> God, I'm not like other astrologers. And, and it's okay to have a billion service people doing this work. And for some reason, when you talk to groups of astrologers or groups of tarot readers or groups of anything else, there's this feeling of being jealous that other people have clients and I don't have clients and you're going to steal my clients and all this crazy stuff. That's not stuff. just an astrologer industry. I thing. know, I, I know. That's but it's, most. It's, <laughs> I, I know, but it's, it's, it's pervasive in human experience. But I'm going to tell you, in these helping professionals, you know, let's say, let's imagine that, I'll just use the United States because we're both here. Um, there are, what, 333 million Americans right now, and uh, some 40 to 50 million of them are, might be looking for jobs within the next couple years, and there might be 10, 20,000 professional astrologers, you know, maybe add up to 100,000 for professional coaches. 
even if I worked every hour of every day, there is no way I'm a drop in the bucket of the potential need that has to be fulfilled to get this huge shift happening. Like, huge. I, I, we can't even conceive of these kinds of things. So why on earth would I be upset for someone else getting clients? I'm like, yes, please, good. M throw more of the starfish back in the ocean as fast as you can. <laughs> Great. And so if you want to take these ideas and create your own masterminds and throw starfish in, excellent. And maybe we will start being able to put a little bit of a dent into what's happening. And um, that just makes more sense to me, especially knowing what I know about, I mean, you want to go too far forward. I, the United States is in the middle of its Pluto return, which happens between like 2023 and 2020. Five ish, it's a long period of time when that's the real meltdown for the United States. So we're like a couple years early for the real meltdown, and it's being joined by two, not one, two more great American eclipses. Two more eclipses going right across the United States, which hasn't happened in forever, except in 2017 when all in the middle of all this stuff happening. So we are in for a massive, massive shift. And where we're going to end up and we're not going to know for a few years we're just not and 20 the world of 2027 is it's not that far away now we're in 2021 can you believe 2021 2027 is six years from now that's not that long but it, it's it feels like the jetson world <laughs> Oh it feels like it, sounds, it feels sounds like a so totally, futuristic. <laughs> Definitely going to be aliens like, and flying cars. I, I and I I heard the other day that um, Elon Musk is like down in South Texas sending up rockets, and I'm like, wait, no one warned me. Can I see the rockets from where I'm? Apparently not, which is sad. But um, I, I, I mean, we are going to you think technology has been changing fast before you ain't seen nothing yet it's just going to accelerate and that's the downside of all the air is if you think you can grab onto things it ain't gonna work and um and so that's gonna be the challenge that we all face is to how to get mobile how to how to not be tied to location, how to, um, I mean, this is, a, here's a challenge for all of you for 2021. Here's a good one. Your work should fit in your go bag. If you can't put your computer, your phone, your iPad in your go bag with your underwear and your passport or whatever else, you got a problem. So figure out how to make it work with your go bag. Now, yes, that's different if you're like, you know, doing something physical and, you know, opening an Etsy store <laughs> and, and actually needs, but, but not entirely. That's everything that we can do to make ourselves more flexible, more resilient, and more mobile will pay off given what's coming. And two eclipses over the North and South Pole in a world of climate change and melting polar ice caps and all that kind of stuff. This year for the environment, we're gonna have some revelations and we're gonna realize things are changing much faster than we ever thought they were. And it's gonna happen fast. It's not gonna be like, um, Sam, you know lots more about the environment than I do, I think. And uh, because I know other things that you do, um, but there's the concept of incremental slow changes, which is one environmental cycle. And then there's like tipping point, super fast changes where everything changes all at once. And we are definitely in a, everything's going to change really fast kind of year. And so I will, it will be interesting to see what happens, especially around the eclipses in the summer months. Um, I think we're going to get some news out. Of, I mean, having a summer eclipse over the North Pole 
I, I think we may find that we have hit a tipping point and we didn't realize how bad it was. And that's also going to change a lot of stuff. And the, the ramifications are enormous. I mean, just enormous. And they affect how we live, how we work, who we work with, how all of well, those I, things. Well, I do have some and, hope around what you're saying with innovations in 2021, just because, I mean, when I was, I minored in environmental science in college, and I just remember there were so many dark nights of the soul around like, oh, we're fucked. Like, we're like, we're past the point that, like, they're already talking about we're past the tipping point. There's no going back. We're screwed. And back in, I don't remember what year. Um but then like after that it, like you you hear about all these other innovations or like very very simple innovations around like algae farming and like the amount of carbon sequestration that we can actually do and like all of these other things that like I mean, hopefully some sort of shock and awe around what's happening will make it so that money is going into the right industries to actually fund those innovations um because I don't know, I, I like I'm, my my hope is not but lost just from seeing the me. next three years. Maybe some of the best three years we've had in a very long time for technological innovations regarding the climate. Mm -hmm. um, Uranus in Uranus in Taurus is lightning in a bottle, and lightning in a bottle is a battery. And a lot of these alternative technologies require batteries or they don't work right so that that's electric cars that's solar farms that's all kinds of things that yeah. we need to store and uranus is electricity ground is taurus and so yeah. anything that puts electricity into a solid state um is going to go leaps and bounds over the next few years and that may change everything so it's, I'm actually hopeful too. I, I, I see Eddie, the Eddie's light, been talking but, about that for years. He's like, oh, this, this battery technology, like I'm just waiting to buy these things until they're cheaper. Cause I know like once they're a few years in and they get smaller, it's going to, so he's been talking about that for a while. So it's cool to hear that the astrology reflects that. Oh yeah. The astrology is great for, um, battery technology is going to be huge. Environmental things are going to be huge next year. Mobility and always is going to be huge. The need to work in community. That's the other thing about the Aquarian age. Um, we swing from me, me, me to we, we, we. And when we are in the me, me, me years, it's all about what I want, what I need, and, and things that relate around that. When we are in the we years, we come together collectively and we work on bigger projects. And we have been in an I, me years, really since the 70s. And we're finally coming into a time astrologically where we're swinging back to we. And that terrifies some people because they're like communist, Marxist people. Um, but we cannot tackle collective projects without we. We can't build pyramids without we. We can't build interstate systems without we. We can't build, we can't tackle climate change. We can't tackle a pandemic without we. And that's maybe when we look back in history, the gift that this pandemic has brought. Yes, it's brought a lot of death and destruction and tragedy, but it's gonna force us to think in terms of we, because, and that we can be taken to other contexts. Because if we can negotiate to vaccinate a world, then we can negotiate to deal with climate change. And so for that, I'm really hopeful about what some of this is going to bring. Well, and, and bringing it back to the online business side of things, you already see it in very successful online businesses who are building the tribes, who are building the communities. They're, they're finding so much success. Oh, loudness in the background. Sorry, guys. Um, they're seeing so much success already. And I, I can only imagine that that is foreshadowing this switch into we. It, like if you can find this deeper mission behind your work, if it's suddenly like, if you can get out of your head and stop like wondering if this post makes you look stupid or like, what will people think of me? And you're driven instead by this deeper mission of, of how you can help people. And by you not being your full self and, in, in 
your biggest visible self, how is that actually stealing from people who you could seriously help with your work? Amen, sister. <laughs> So Donna, um, the, as I said, the name of this podcast is Business as a Magical Practice, and I would love to hear how you use business as a magical practice. Um, I can't imagine business not being a magical practice. <laughs> I mean, I my whole life is like built around this, and I I feel very lucky that I get to um, help people figure out how their own brain works. That's why it's the school of magic and mastery. I, I didn't want to, I, I'm not satisfied with, yes, I can teach people how to do tarot. Yes, I can teach them how to um, do astrology and, and um, use a crystal ball and talk to spirits and all the things that go with magic that you might see in any magic book that you pick up. But that's only half of the equation. If you can't if you can't learn how to witness what you are doing, if you can't learn how your emotions work, if you can't learn how to move your emotions from this thing to that thing in order to facilitate what you want to accomplish in the world, um, you know, making spell, working spells and, you know, throwing potions around, it's not going to get you anywhere because it's not, it's not empowered. The empowered comes from your conscious connection and awareness to something that's deeper. And business gives us the daily opportunity to practice our self-mastery because the karma is instantaneous. <laughs> If we, if I am not mastering my emotions, if I, as you just said a moment ago, am sitting and worried that if I write a blog that no one will love me and all that kind of stuff that prevents me from going and doing and that gets to procrastinate, guess what? I have no business now. Or if I'm worried that, oh my God, I don't want to advertise what I'm doing because someone may not like me or again, not self-mastery. That is marinating. And, if, and we need to, business gives us the opportunity to learn how to think differently because it immediately rewards us for thinking differently. Plus, it's what we got. I mean, that's the Western way. Let's, let's get clear. We don't, we don't have monasteries on every corner that people can go move into because they don't. And, and as we move out of the Piscean age and into the Aquarian age, there aren't going to be monasteries on every corner anymore. They're going away. That is the old way of doing things. The new way that that is the Aquarian age is to be in constant communication with spirit while living your daily life and learning how to integrate the voice of spirit or your tarot cards or whatever while you are working through your business plans. You know, I, I and, and I feel really, really fortunate that my, um, I, I've never seen it any other way. My uh, shamanic teacher that I met when I was like 21 years old, 22 years old, her, her, the, the shamanic teaching was her side hustle. You know, her day job was a grant writer and she'd been writing grants for the um, Native American reservations that she lived on. And so I never expected it to be any other way <laughs> that basically she's writing business plans and, and using business plans as a magical tool for manifestation because it requires all the same things. It requires you to be aware of your intentions and be clear in your focus and know how to get what you, what you want to accomplish. And, you know, magic is an adjunct. It's not a replacement. I mean, I can't just, I had a roommate when I was in college in the place downstairs and she had to go away for the summer. So she's going to sublet her place. And I said, Hey, Hey, how's that subletting going? She's like, I'm not worried. God will provide. And I'm like, did you post it? No, I'm not worried. God will provide. I'm like, don't you think it would be easier for God to provide if you maybe put up a notice down in the student union and maybe the student newspaper, because otherwise how they go find you. And that's the same 
we get these ideas and we think, oh, it will be fine. And then it's not. And then we say, well, oh, I guess it was never meant to be, or I'm not good enough. It's like, no, you didn't put up the freaking posters. Didn't put up the freaking posters. So this is where we need, you know, our peeps. We need our peeps like Sam who can put up the posters in all the places that people actually are so that you can get them into what you need to do. And we need the people who can help you plan. And, and we need the, we need the, we need the, the people who like to count the money. And, and so that's all legitimate and legal. And we need the people who can um, do the motivation. And we need the art people and the graphic design people. We need everybody. It's an all hands on deck kind of year. Because in the making the network is where we're going to find our strength in the we. So beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Donna. This has been really You're welcome. Fun. <laughs> I, I hope I, I hope I did not disappoint by not giving you. No, you didn't things, disappoint. But... I, I like. I think I'm going to do some reflection afterwards of like how this is actually like a, a great play of the future of 2021. I, I'm. I need to do some reflection. Uh, I'll, I'll. I'll text you. <laughs> or I'll, like, I will make give a little, you like, like one sheet. <laughs> I will give you my one sheet here. My one scrappy sheet. Well, no, uh, what I was saying have is this. Like my own attachment around like having like oh, validity okay. and stuff like that's what was like playing out and more so than anything um again I'll, I'll reflect on this and see how how my own neuroses are are I'm showing sorry, themselves yeah. this podcast <laughs> yeah I know I know earth girls but I I I'm a cheaty earth girl I'm an earth girl but I have a grand air trine and my grand air trine is really happy. <laughs> it's like, there's a sale, you know, grab your, let's go windsurfing. It's a windsurfing kind of year. I love it. Well, where can people find you all over the place? I know you have a, a ton of, you have a course open right now. I think you have a few courses open right now and I I'd love to hear all the things. Yes. My website is magicandmastery.com. So it's really easy to find. And if you needed to email me, um, all you have to do is send me an owl at magicandmastery.com, like an O-W-L at magicandmastery.com. Um, I have uh, all the time. We have my Magic and Mastery Coven. Um, it is a monthly membership program. And I have been transferring my, I, I realized a couple years ago that I had like 60 courses on my computer doing nothing. <laughs> like that was not acceptable anymore. So I, I have been moving all of my coursework into a place where it's actually accessible. So I'm, I'm basically building like Netflix for witchy people and slowly by, you know, making uh, monthly courses available and um, monthly ceremonies available and divination. So if you want to know what's happening month to month, I will tell you, but it's kind of like a month is as far as I go. I give everybody a workbook so they can work through exactly what aspect and what to make of it in their own life, lots of space. Um, and, and I have monthly coaching so people can ask whatever they want and like we, we mastermind it out. Um, so I, I have all that built into my coven. But on top of that, I have, I am, moving my longer courses online. So I did the tarot course, Magic of Tarot in the summertime, which was epic. It was like 16 weeks, but people walked away speaking the language of tarot in a way that they never had before. And I even learned things putting together the course again, even though I've been teaching it for like ever. Um, I'm working on my astrology series now. I teach astrology without charts to start with. So we are diving in right now. The course is launching. It's called Planetary Magic. Um, and we start um, going through all of the planets so you can get a personal relationship with them and put them to work for you because I am totally about making my whole planetary team and I give them all jobs. <laughs> this is your job, Venus. Go, go do this. Mercury, go do that. And we come together on our little planetary board meeting and, and, and have like know that we're moving forward where we need to go. Um, and then I will continue. I, see, I have a, my business plan actually goes into 2022 because I know exactly how much to do. So um, I'm, I'm working on a plan that was created last year and 
but it's just a really big plan. <laughs> so after we get all that done, I get to go do the Kabbalah. You're clearly working with that. the Mars cycle, right? You got that two year out thing. <laughs> I, I, well, I just, there was a lot of information Yeah. and I had, I had it already on my computer. And so we sat down, we actually sat down in 20, 2019. I knew at the beginning of 2019, I had to go. Um, I knew it was coming. And I'm like, I can't wait until I'm in the middle of it. It won't work. So I had to resign from what I was doing and take a few months to get organized and then make a plan and get some help. And um, we started rolling. And I'm really grateful because I got, we got our membership up in uh, uh, autumn of 2019. So it was the, the autumn equinox. North, the you, you did Northern know Hemisphere's autumn was equinox. coming. <laughs> I did. I know I did. I, no, I'm I saying knew it was going to happen. More than, so, of course. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a choice. Yeah. So, th- I mean, that's the beauty of astrology. I mean, I you can see these big cycles and what's happening. And so, when I tell you, when I tell you, make yourself mobile as soon as possible. Yeah. I mean it. Yeah. I mean it because it's coming. And no, you don't have to do it like right this second. But <laughs> if you're not mobile by like 2025. There's a problem. Yeah. So, and, and I don't mean to scare people. I'm not a scary person. I'm not, I'm not like a, you know, terrified people. But um, the world is changing and we're not going back. And we have to adapt because we, little humans, are not in charge of everything. <laughs> and because of that, it's not personal. And that's, that's, a, that's, a good lesson for the year is people have the opportunity to spend less time feeling sorry for themselves. And 2020, there was an awful lot of time to feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. And if you can do nothing else for 2021 is to quit your addiction to feeling sorry for yourself, you will be light years ahead of everybody else for what has to happen next. There's my advice. I love it. Love all the advice. And you guys, Donna is a really amazing teacher. She has been in this work for decades and she's not just, she's not just a sparkly personality who's fun to listen to. She's also like the curriculum she creates is just insane. I've, I've seen students go through her courses and just have these crazy transformations and really, really, really embodied knowledge versus like just this intellectual. She does a really amazing job as in, in, of embodying and experiencing something that feels very intangible in some ways. So um, definitely go to magicandmastery.com and figure out a way to work with her. <laughs> You're all welcome. All welcome. And thank you, Sam, for inviting me. This Thanks, is Donna. So fun. <laughs>